Hello, my name is Eyes Wide Open, and I'm back at it again with another one. If you have found this video, you just found a video that is a needle in the haystack. I want to tell you a little bit um, about my channel. It's pretty much what you see. You know, my eyes is wide open. And my job is to search for the truth and only the truth. If I see you out there preaching the wrong truth, if I catch it, I'm going to address it. I was deceived myself. But now that my eyes is open, deceive no more. The man you see on the screen is what you call Jesus Christ. And he is the false image of Jesus Christ. He's not what you want to call the mark of the beast. But if you want to dress to that, he can be part of the mark of the beast. But he is mainly the image of the beast. Nothing more. He is not what the Bible describes. And the question is, who is this man? Why is the world being deceived? Because, like I said, I was one who was deceived too. A lot of you might just might say, you know, um, does the image of Christ really matter? Matter of fact, yes it does. It matters a lot. Because it's pretty much bare false witness. And this man even went so far to declare itself the Son of God and God himself. Which the Bible say he is neither one. I might even shock you by me even saying that because I'm no antichrist. But I'm just telling you, if you found this video, you just found the truth. Because what you're about to hear, you is not going to hear too much from anybody. I am one of the few who's going to show you the truth. This man is Sire Bojia. That's who this man is. And I even feel sorry for you people who even say that you had a dream that you met Jesus Christ. Because you are 100% been deceived. You are probably the devil himself. Or you probably need some meds. Or the devil just plain out deceiving. I'm sorry that it uh, even happened to you. But if you don't know God, I advise you to watch this video. And I will do my best to lead you into who God is. But I'm going to mainly focus on this so-called son of God. Because God never declared that he have a son. And the world is deceived. So we're going to show you a little, um, I'm going to show you a picture. This is um, Caesar Vigier, Vigier. And this is his, his real image. The one on the left hand side, that is him. The one in the middle, that's just a sketch of him. And the one on the right, that is the actor. This man is nothing more than a man. He's no deity, and he's damn sure no God. And he's not the son of God, because he's not even closely what the Bible described him. And as we see another picture of him, this is, again, on the left, that is his brother. Once again, on the right, that is Caesar Bojia. This man is a murderer, a liar, a fornicator and this man even has sex with his own sister yes he even has sex with his own sister and this man had even killed his own brother just to take power Caesar Caesar Borgia is the son of Pope the Six. if you don't believe me I need you to take your time out and look into it but I'm going to show you in this video 
just a little bit of the truth. Who changed the Bible? Why did they change the Bible? You know, um, for some of these camps out here, um, they took the they took the word of God and they blackwashed it. They even believe that that God do have a son. You know, they don't believe in the Virgin Mary. I will give them that. But most of the world believe in the Virgin Mary, which is not even biblical true. It's not true. No matter how you see it, it's not true. But my focus is I'm going to show you in this video. him so much that he had his brother assassinated in order to obtain the office. Juan was brutally hacked and stabbed eight times, and his throat was cut. And I would end yours. together and a stone had been hung around his neck to make sure he sank to the bottom of the Tiber River. The rumors spread that Cesare killed his brother. There was never any proof. Afraid. 
and I feel, I hear my heart racing, pounding, 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 pounding. And he leans in, and right when I feel like he's going to headbutt me, his head goes into my head, and I hear his heartbeat. No problem. And mine. And he takes another step and steps in. And I'm standing there. I hear the heartbeats. I hear my heartbeat slow down to his. And I know everything. And I am in the mind of Christ. And I see the whole panorama of creation as if it's all done and there's a new heaven and a new earth the judgments are over and it's perfect and uh, there's a street light on outside my window and the light's kind of flickering something weird's going on I look up hey, what's going on with this light light's out here all of a sudden traveling in on this beam of light floating in on this beam of light this is where the story gets weird, and I just got to tell it, all right? Floating in on this beam of light in kind of a meditative position comes in, floats in through my window, and boom! Rays of glory, rays of awesomeness, rays of purity, rays of majesty, rays of holiness is booming off of this person. And I see him, and I say, that looks like, <laughs> that looks just like Jesus, dude. It was Jesus. He shows up in my room. He looks kind of like I've seen him in pictures, but a little bit different. I can say, those people who drew the pictures, they probably seen it before. I think you should probably see Jesus before trying to draw him. They probably seen him before, because look kind of like the dude. <laughs> anyway, he shows up, and I'm like, I'm starstruck. My mouth is hanging open. I'm like, what? <laughs> in my heart, I say, you're Jesus. What, what are you doing here? But my face is like, what? <laughs> it's awesome. Awesome. He looks at me, he says, Will. So he knew my name. He said, What's up, my dude? Those are his words, not mine. That's what he said to me. He said, What's up, my dude? And then he looked in at me, man. And I'm sitting there in a broken center, and uh, just in the. I'm like, Man, my life is cracked and, and messed up, dude. And uh, the grossness has just been poured into this thing, dude. And he looks at me and he sees the greatest treasure that you've that you've ever seen. If you could see the biggest treasure, dude, and you were jumping up, and woo, <laughs> dude, he's looking at me and there's this pure love, dude. The value that he sees in each one of us, the value that he created us to be, the value that you have. You were made to be wonderful and accomplishing purpose and awesomeness. He wonderfully made you. And man, that's just pouring over me. It is the greatest feeling in the world, man. Oh my goodness, dude. It was like, I don't even know what to compare it to. It was like a father looking at his child or something. Puts you, he said, I'm the ultimate problem solver. He started floating around. I thought he was like the Kung Fu master or something. He started floating around. He's like, I can tackle this problem and solve it, which allows me to get to this problem and solve it. I'm the ultimate, he solves problems. He's like, because... If you read in the Bible, it's a form of um, witchcraft, voodoo and things like that. When I saw that, I went, oh my God, I've been doing that. That day we will know one thing, guilty, guilty, guilty. I am guilty and I deserve hell because God is good and I'm not. I was leading everybody away from Jesus, away from Christ, through other forms of healing. But when I saw Jesus healing, on the streets myself. Be healed right now. What? Really? God? Look at that. Look how simple that is. Look how beautiful that is. Can't wait to tell the story, my story.
identity of the real Bella has been taken over by me. <laughs> there are thousands of paintings of Jesus, and they don't even come close. Jesus was the creation of the Roman Catholic Church, which served to replace the real Bella, who probably looked more like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> but who cares? The truth doesn't matter, as long as you pay your tithes. <laughs> Hey, did you know that Pope Alexander VI commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to reinvent Jesus in the image of his own beloved son, Cesare Borgia? He felt that the Vatican needed a makeover because the real fellow wasn't too appealing to the general public. So, voila, here I am, the modern version of the fake Jesus. <laughs> Got you again. You saw me. I actually came clean and told you that I wasn't the real Jesus. I also told you that I was created to make certain populations happy and comfortable. Well, I Look at these two pictures. Look at these two pictures right here. See? Right here, that's Cesar Borgia. And over here, that's supposedly... Jesus Christ. Can you really tell the difference between the two of these people? Can you really tell the difference between the two of these people? No, you can't. Because in reality, this Christ right here, this Christ right here, is nothing more than an image of Cesar Borgia. This Christ is this Christ right here, this one they call Jesus. This is the Jesus that you will find in churches all across America, in paintings, in artwork, and so on and so forth. And people think that this is Jesus Christ. That when they when, when unbelievers or believers picture Jesus Christ, this is the image that they get. What they don't understand is that really, when they worship this image, worship this image, they are worshiping Cesare Borgia, a false Christ. Now, if you go and you read up on Cesare Borgia, you're going to find a lot about a lot of stuff about the guy. How he was in league with the Pope and the Vatican, how he committed incest. Jesus is divine and human natures, but it is the divine that has dominated. In the process, it is Jesus' essential humanity and the humanity of his teachings that has been lost. The Didache also contains a detailed description of a very early communion service. Unlike today, there is no suggestion that the bread and wine are the body and blood of Christ. In fact, Jesus is referred to, not as God's son, but his servant. And concerning the broken bread, we thank you, our Father, for the life and knowledge which you made known to us through Jesus, your servant. To you belongs the glory forever. Do you think that one of the reasons why they don't mention Jesus as Lord God and they don't mention the resurrection was because they didn't believe that those events had taken place, that Jesus wasn't the Son of God, and that Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, but instead he was a human, a prophet, and not divine. It's a dangerous question. In my opinion, uh, the fact of the resurrection of Christ uh, couldn't and shouldn't be ignored. Uh, Paul speaks and says, if Christ uh, was not resurrected, then we shall be accused that we, uh, we speak falsely against God. What is absolutely fundamental to all Christians, including myself, is the idea that Jesus is God. Without that, there is no Christianity. But what is now? So we're just going to go straight to the point. Jesus was nothing more than the Gentile Savior. One Jesus, I ain't going to call him Jesus, but one was called the Messiah. He was nothing more than God's servant. The so-called Jesus was the Gentile Savior. It was added in by the um, Jewish, 
Jews passed it down to the Catholics, and the Catholics just pretty much finished it off. He was given to the world just to satisfy the world. The Messiah only came for Israel, and we're going to get that too. But let's read um, 2 Timothy verse 4, chapter 4, verse 17. Now withstanding, the Lord stood with me, my strength, and with me, me, that by me the preach might, preaching might be fully known, and that all Gentiles might hear. Now we're going to go to the next one. Where to, whereunto I am appointed to preachers. I'm an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. As you see, the more this is pretty much progressed, it's just showing that that they have false prophets to go straight into the Gentiles. Because um go to this next one. Because the real Christ, aka the Messiah, was only given unto Israel. He only preached to Israel to bring them back into the laws of the commandments. A lot of you don't want to believe this. You probably don't want to hear it. You want to say, hey, man, you just have your mind. There was no virgin birth. I'm going to exit that out because we have too many um, deities in ancient past. We have the ancient Ra. We have Isis. We had Nimrod. And we even have Kushner. Take your time out. Google this stuff and you can see it for yourself. And I have no reason to lie to you. I'm just showing you nothing but facts. Um, we're just going to go straight down to Ephesians 3.8, which really sticks out. I should preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable rich of Christ. As you see, as is, everything you see on the screen is hands down pointing out that Christ only basically was coming to preach to the Gentiles. Once again, I'm going to say it again. He was there to satisfy the Gentiles. You've been duped. You was fooled. We're going to go to Ezekiel 3, verse 20. We're going to start straight from there. And again, with a righteous man does turn from his righteous way and committed iniquity. And I will lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because has not given him a warning. He shall die in his sins. And he righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. By his blood will I requain it at thy hand. Basically, this is basically saying that if you're a person, you have been warned. Somebody like me is telling you that, that Christ is not the Son of God. You have to understand God is alone. He don't need no other deity or anything next to him to help him create anything for even for Christ to go so far and say that he is God that is blasphemy against the most high because if Christ was God how can he say he don't know thou day and why he didn't know the different forms of victory and why would he say that my father is greater than me that will let you know hands down that is false teaching somebody added to the Bible and not only that we have to keep going. I have to show you even more. I'm going to show you what is this stumbling block. 1 Corinthians, 1st chapter, um, verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. They have coded the Bible. A lot of y'all don't understand that. You don't even know it. Man been trying to decode the Bible for hundreds of years, for years, for decades. They even went so far to say that Obama was the Antichrist. They even went so far, they tried to talk about the Valley of the Dry Bones, that they are Israel. Those, those, whatever you want to call those people in Israel, they are not, and I'm going to repeat, they are not the chosen people of God. They don't match not even one prophecy in the Bible. But for you people who don't believe, this is your stumbling block. They give you Christ crucified for your stumbling block to block you from going to cry uh, to the real God the most high because you have to understand show me where Moses had to go through Jesus Christ in order to get to the most high because it's all lies show me all any old any prophet from the Old Testament had to go through 
Christ to get to the Most High. No, it was all lies. Jeremiah didn't. Daniel didn't. Nobody didn't. But all of a sudden, the New Testament comes. You have the twelves. And all of a sudden, you have to go through Christ in order to get to God. Last time I checked, the Messiah even went so far, and he said, don't here, pray to me. Galatians 5, verse 2. Behold, Paul, I am Paul, say unto that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Once again, they are saying that Christ shall profit you nothing. We're going to keep going. Matthew 15. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. So Christ already knew that somebody was going to change the Bible and they was going to make him into a God and they was going to worship him. The Messiah was trying to warn people. They were trying to warn people of this stumbling block. You have to stand that all prophecies is all around the lost tribe of Israel. If you don't know who the lost tribe is and you going by the false tribe, you are being deceived. Once again, you are being 100% deceiving, deceived, and you are heading straight to the hellfire. Do not let this devil trick you. The whole world took part of this because the Messiah only told the 12 to go to the lost tribe of Israel. And I'll show you. Matthew 10, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth the commandments of them, saying, Go not un into the ways of the Gentiles, and into the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We're going to go straight to verse 7. And ye go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The real Christ, the real Christ only preached, only preach kingdom come. He only talked about coming to the lost tribe of Israel. So this is one of the false teachings of, of man doctrines. John 14 verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Why would he say that? Because that is not matching anything in the Old Testament. Even if, if we scroll down. Let's see what the real Messiah said. If you love me, keep my commandments. Then again, that could be false. Because Christ don't have no commandments. John 14, we're going to go to 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he keeps my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abide with him. He that love me not keep my sin, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. That will be the real Messiah speaking because he is actually saying keep the commandments. Keep his father commandments. Not what the other verse was saying right here. Keep my commandments. That's like me telling you, well, here, let me give you some laws and you better keep these laws. But you easily stroll down and you can see that he's actually saying keep my father commandments. You know, if you love me and you understand me, keep my command. you know, keep my father commandments, period. And that's referred to the 16, 613 laws of Moses. This is John 14, and we're going to go to verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye will rejoice, because I said I go unto my father, for my father is greater than I. So this right here is going to prove that Christ, basically, is not God. Because if he is God, why would he say that my father is greater than mine? So this, I'm just showing you that somebody have 
100% tamper with this book. Why? It's to take you to hell along with them because they're already there. So they tamper with this book for you can get there with them. That is AKA the devil. So this is Mark 12. This is the real Messiah. This is verse 29. And Jesus said to him, first of all, the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The real Messiah, when he was speaking to his people, he always say, hear, O Israel. That is for keys for number one. That's showing you that he come for his people only. And I'm going to show you that he only came for his people. This is Matthew. This is Matthew 15. This is um, Matthew 15, and we're going to go to verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of Israel. And we can go to so on and so on, straight to verse 26. But he answered and said, Is it not to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs? So why is the Messiah calling the Gentile people dogs? Because if you go to verse 22, you'll see, Behold, a woman of Canaanite came out to the coast and cried until saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, the son of David. My daughter is grave as vex with a devil. So she's saying her daughter's possessed by a demon. But the Messiah still looked out for her because, you know, the reason why he looked out for her because she had faith. That's why. But he didn't do it with his power. He did it with the God of the power of God. Because Christ didn't have no power. Let me better yet say the Messiah did not have power. Everything he done was straight done through only to God and I'm going to give you some more verses real fast this is the uh, the Antichrist right here this is John 5 verse 22 for the father judged no man but have committed all judgment unto the son this is what a lot of these camps like to talk about blah 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 but anyway we're going to go straight to the point and see what the real Christ is aka the Messiah said. I'm showing this right here because I want you people to understand and remember when God is speaking. Remember, O Jacob of Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee Thou art servant of Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. God is saying don't forget him. He's telling his people do not forget him. Because somebody had contaminated this Bible so bad. They made Christ into a God. That people will start worshiping Christ more than they worship the Father. Which you have to come out of that. All Christ a.k.a. the Messiah, all his job was to do was to bring back the commandments and teach kingdom come. Nothing more. Anyway, I'm going to end this video, and there is more videos to become. My name is Eyes Wide Open. Thank you for watching my video.